So I have some rusty pock marks on this bump rip from my 81 CJ7 Jeep. And I did a quick test and I, and I was actually surprised by how well the JB Weld did in comparison to some zinc primer powder coat that I put on here. So I'll kind of walk through that and uh, show you the results. So I've sandblasted this and it's all clean now. This is a bumperette for my 81 Jeep. And um, <clears throat> you can see it has those kind of the metal pock marks right there. And I'm just trying to see if I can fill those in. I know you could use um, all metal. Um, it's a filler that I've seen a couple of people use on videos. I've heard mixed reviews on whether that works all right. I get the idea that the filler is supposed to be. So I've sandblasted this and it's all clean now. This is a bumperette for my 81 Jeep. And um, <clears throat> you can see it has those kind of the metal pock marks right there. And I'm just trying to see if I can fill those in. I know you could use um, all metal. Um, it's a filler that I've seen a couple people use on videos. I've heard mixed reviews on whether that works all right. I get the idea that the filler is supposed to be, or it's, it's ideally has some form of metal in it because for the powder to stick, it needs to be charged. So that's why you have a ground to it. And if it's something that, like an epoxy, that has no metal in it or whatever, or a Bondo, it's not only going to not have a charge, but also something like Bondo that probably contributes to the fact that we don't see really good results with, or at least the tests I've seen online, good results with powder coating um, over Bondo. I don't think it, you know, it doesn't conduct electricity, so it's not going to get the grounding charge to it for the powder to stick. Also, I don't know how well it holds up to 400 degrees where you have to bake this. There may be something involved with that as well, but I'm trying the back side of the, the bump right here. Um, nobody will see this, so I'm just going to do this as a quick test. Um, there are some pock marks on around the rest of it, but the rest of it's pretty, pretty clean there. I'm not going to bother with all that but again I want to try as a test so right here what I've done is I've actually used some JB weld I mean a quick setting steel reinforced I, I don't know I does that actually mean that there's steel in there does that actually mean it's gonna be conductive does that actually mean that it's uh, <laughs> it might make a good again I've, I've seen people reference JB weld when filling in before doing powder coating uh, I just don't know how well that's going to work. Anyways, I put it over here. I, I've sanded off some. I'm going to sand it off a little bit more and try to get it as smooth as I can. But uh, again, just as a test. And then again, I don't know how the temperature is going to hold up to or how it's going to hold up to the 400 degrees. Um, but over here, I'm going to try as another test. I got some from Prismatic Powder, um, some zinc primer powder. And I want to try this. I've, I've messed around with it a little bit. And basically what I'm going to do is, you know, I could bake it first, get it super hot and kind of hot flock it and put it on there. I try, actually tried that once before. Um, it was a little bit uneven because I was kind of pouring the powder on something hot. I wasn't spraying it. The whole problem was spraying it. I mean, I've seen, again, a video on somebody doing that where they basically just took the whole thing and did a heavy primer on it. Um, but then they they were like sanding it because you're still going to get the little divots in here. That's still going to show even if you put a couple of coats on there. So what they were doing was they were basically putting a heavy coat on it and sanding the whole thing. Whatever it was, it was a, it was a big flat piece of metal, but they were sanding the whole thing to try to bring the high marks down to the, I guess, where the where the pock was filled in. And in concept, that should work perfectly fine. But then you're doing a ton of sanding on it. So I thought, well, you should really just be putting the powder, if you can, in the specific spots. And, <clears throat> you know, I, I tried a little bit with some of the semi-gloss that I have, and that didn't work out 
real well for a couple of different re reasons. Anyway, so this zinc, I'm hoping it will, um, I'm gonna try heating up only that spot from underneath. I have my, uh, my propane torch here. I'm gonna try heating that up, kind of simulate just that spot being in the oven. That way I can kind of mess around with the powder up here, try to get it, you know, where, where I would typically want it. Again, I'm not going to try to do the whole area. I'm just going to try to do a little area about a, you know, probably inch in diameter just to kind of see what happens. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put, just want to kind of put that in there around what the normal area would be. It's going to have, it's going to melt into it. So I don't want it to be too high, but I want it to sit in those. So I'm thinking if I tap it and let it lie flat a little bit from there, kind of leave that as it is. And we're going to see what happens now. So I'm going to turn on my blowtorch here and I'm going to see what temperature it gets up to. So two twenty five now. Let's slow it down a little bit. I think I need to fully bake it. I just want it to melt enough. I'm going to go ahead and leave it that. That's kind of like that initial hot flock. It's um, kind of reading all over the board. I, I think it got up to around um 250 somewhere in there but it but it clearly melted so hopefully it kind of got melted in there 270 is some of the spots underneath it got you know up to 300 so we're gonna see because i figure if i do it from above i could have heated it like this but it's just gonna blow the powder everywhere and again i could have heated the whole thing up in the oven brought it out and tapped the powder on there and I actually tried that before but you have no ability once it hits that spot that's 400 degrees it melts instantly so you know maybe it's just more sanding or whatever but I didn't feel like I had enough control over it anyway so I'm gonna let that cure dry whatever um, and see how well I can go ahead and sand that down flat okay I sanded this down a little bit um, I hit it with some uh, I guess this is 120, hit it with this thing a little bit, and then also with finished off with some 220, and it is pretty smooth there. Again, this is the side with the, um, with the zinc primer. I think it got mostly flat. It looks like there still might be a little bit of something in there but i think most of the holes in the pits for the most part have been filled in it's not i want i don't want to run my finger over it because i just sandblasted everything again and then also blew it off so it's ready to go into the sandblaster and then this over here this again this is the um, jb weld there are a couple of i guess i didn't fill it in deep enough there are a couple of those marks but uh, paying maybe more attention because again it's completely there's there there's marks everywhere so if just those one two three four five six basically um divots show up or maybe even fewer than six then it will have shown that it's kind of um and if it comes out shiny and, and smooth and things like that then maybe jb weld um, does work pretty well again over here again just looking there is a small divot like right in the middle that I could feel before I finished all the sanding. But anyways, you know, let's see, you can kind of see overall, like how much are these marks gonna show through? I'm gonna do a pretty heavy coat, I think, 
again just to try to fill it in or try to bleed in there's a lot of little tiny ones down there again not too worried about those but I'm gonna give it a shot and see what happens So this is uh, kind of interesting. I got it all shot and everything, and I'll give a sh close up. The the zinc primer side, it would not cover. I mean, I just absolutely hosed it down, and it did not. Doesn't look like it got covered. I mean, it'll be fine, but it's hidden and everything else. You also kind of see how much the pock marks come through. We'll see how much that evens up out as it kind of melts and flows into everything. This is the JB Weld side, and um, I'll look back on the video, but I think it was this side over here that, that I had done, and that looks amazingly flat. I mean, it was just as pocked up as this over here. So I don't know, we're gonna go ahead and toss it in the oven. We're gonna, we're gonna see what happens. So I'm pretty surprised by the results. Uh, again, I tried some JB Weld, and so this sort of steel reinforced um, on just kind of layered it over. Um, I showed after I put it on there, but basically I just mixed it and just kind of layered it over this little spot right here. I kind of showed that just now. And then right over here, I put some zinc primer I did you know, I saw you saw I did the the butane up below that little map gas, and I put some of the dust right on here, the powder coating, and kind of melted in. I sanded it down. I both sanded both down to about 220. Um, I and I knocked it down. I tried to make it pretty flat. I mean, I didn't do I didn't spend a ton of time. Again, this is going to be hidden there, but I I'm surprised by the results. So let me give a little bit quicker or better show of this. I showed earlier that the, the zinc primer, I couldn't get it. And now I'm sure those of you who are better off um, working with some of these primers and the powder coats and things like that, uh, hot flocking, other things like that. I must have done this wrong or something because it didn't want to stick at all. I just, I kind of hosed it down and uh, I have an Eastwood gun. Maybe I had it on the high setting. Maybe it needs to be on the low setting or, or different settings altogether with a different gun. But it didn't seem on a stick at all. So it's almost like it wasn't getting charged. It was blowing right past that and sticking to some of the other areas. Um, over here, now again, I didn't do the whole thing, so it's still pretty gnarly in here. And you can still see those six marks if you can. I don't know how close I can get this. Um, right there, some little divots that I saw them in there after I sanded it down. But notice that the, the area around it is pretty smooth. So I would say the JB Weld worked pretty well. Again, it lasted through the 400 degree heat uh, for about 12 minutes, which is how much I baked it at. And it, it looks surprisingly good. Now it's not perfect if you're looking for a super smooth sheen. But that may be more about the sanding that I did. The way I'm looking at it in the, again, it may be hard to see, but I, I did this one area there, and again, I knew that there, and I could feel that there were some bumps right there. 
but the area around that is pretty shiny and pretty smooth. So, you know, if you have a bunch of pock marks and things like that, I don't know if it's going to really smooth out the whole area, but if you have one particular area you're looking at, um, you don't have some, what is it? I looked up, it's the uh, US Chemical All Metal. That seems to be something that's kind of made for this, but it's kind of expensive. It's like 50, 60 bucks for a little, you know, a little half pint of it. And I'm only gonna use it a couple of times, so I thought, why don't I, you know, try something else to see if there's a, another way. Also, you know, there's some mixed reviews on that. Some people say JB Weld works, some people say other primers work, other people have said, you know, Bondo works. They do make a metal steel, steel reinforced Evercoat uh, body filler, and also I think something from Bondo. Again, there's a lot of different stuff that you could try, but again, I had this laying around, costs less than 10 bucks. Um, I mixed it up, put it on there. It did dry, did let it dry, not on purpose, but it did end up drying for about a week. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it and kind of that curing time, but I'm pretty impressed with how smooth that is. So again, yeah, I can see a little bit of, maybe a little bit of shine there. Again, it's not totally even, but if I had spent some more time, if I'd put a little bit more maybe on there, spent a little bit more time sanding it, if it was like a given scratch, a deep cut or a groove or something like that, I think it would have done a pretty good job if I had spent some time with it, um, sanding it down and getting at least a much, much better look uh, from it than just kind of leaving it as is. So yeah, I would, I'd recommend that again, not for a really fine noticeable finish, but if you have a little spot that you're trying to fill in there, um, I'm gonna go ahead and try this stuff again and um, hopefully it works. So that's that test. I might do some other tests as I come across a couple situations. I'm gonna go ahead and actually use this again on another, the other bumper that I have <clears throat> on a more noticeable area. There's a big old pock area on the other one right in there, right in the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it on that and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with it. So I might do a, a really quick video on that just as a quick update, maybe a part two to this one. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how it, how it came out. So if this was helpful at all, go ahead and give it a like and um, Subscribe if you want to see some more videos. I'm going to keep pulling them together from um, sort of my home DIY powder coating setup and also just uh, working on the 81 CJ7.